Never leave a chair empty at night. You don't know who might take a seat. No sleep horror story. We were pretty superstitious. All of us were. My mom, my dad, grandparents, and teachers. Neighbors, coaches, and bus drivers. We lived our lives by many traditions that might seem naive and old-fashioned at first glance. There is a simple reason for us having them, though. We all lived fine and well obeying the communal gut feeling and it never disappointed as long as we listened to our sayings. Not all of them sounded as inherently disturbing as the empty chair of course. Some were just signs we looked out for. Like if there's a butterfly in your house, it means you will get visitors soon. Others were little tricks that could ease your life. Like if you want visitors to leave your home, a bit of salt poured into their shoes will do the trick. And some were, well, a bit disturbing, I guess. Like, if you lean over a railing, the devil will grab you and pull you towards the ground. That one we can't really fact check, unfortunately. As I said, there were many of those. Phrases they kept repeating so nobody will ever forget. And the one I've heard the most in my life happens to be the one about the chair. Never leave a chair in your bedroom empty at night. Dad repeated it every night like a prayer when I was still little. And mum would come by later in the evening to make sure I had a backpack, some books, or even just a jacket lying on my desk chair. It was the only one in my room. As I grew older they didn't need to remind me anymore, the phrase was deeply ingrained into my brain. I still heard mum's footsteps at night, though. I suppose she wanted to be really sure nobody would be taking a seat next to me at night. When I was younger, I didn't understand why this was so important to everyone I knew. To me, there was one simple solution to the whole hex altogether, simply not having a chair in your room. You don't really need it when you have your bed anyway, except for doing homework maybe. Unfortunately, however, removing the chair is not an option. And there's a reason for that too of course. As I said, superstitions are kind of our thing. As terribly afraid as the people of our community were of forgetting an empty chair, they were even more anxious of what might happen if there was no chair at all. You want to have a space for someone that might visit. You simply don't want them to visit without your approval first. It's a very strange concept and I can't quite say how it even started. I suppose it's something our village people made up a long time ago. Someone probably once tried to remove their chair and was met with terrible fortune and so they took the risk of having the chair in their rooms with items stacked on top. I never cared for the strange ideas and superstitions of our community much, not until I understood what happens when you don't listen to them. You can never have every single member of a community obeying the same rules. Some people are inherently against going with the flow. Risk takers, show-offs, and adrenaline junkies. Then you have the ones who never listened much as kids and grew up not caring for old traditions. Especially when they read and watch all kinds of horror stories and start to realize that something isn't necessarily scary just because someone says so. I suppose many kids now just think that the whole saying is a way for their parents to make sure they keep their rooms clean. And so of course there were the ones who intentionally kept a chair, or even more, welcomingly empty for whoever might visit at night. They called themselves brave. We call them cautionary tales. Because they all would regret it. When the visitor came. The story I know the best is the one of Billy Tucker. Billy never cared much for any of the tales the older ones tell. Billy liked to tempt fate more than anything. While he lived with his parents. They made sure he was safe even if he didn't approve but Billy grew older and bought his own little home in the same street as us. It was the very first night that he would sleep there alone, and I suppose he forgot about the chair. Or possibly he just wanted to see what would happen if he ignored the phrases that had been shoved in his head all his life. I saw him getting his mail the following day. He looked tired and disturbed. He told me he kept thinking there was someone inside his home but that wasn't possible. Nobody ever broke into a house around here. He told me he heard someone whisper in his ear to wake him up. When he looked around, he saw nothing but a jacket that wasn't there before, hanging by his closet. You know it was probably my ma, that woman is anxiety personified, Billy joked back then. That was the first day. After that Billy hardly left his home anymore. I'd see his parents stop by at times to bring him food but he never stepped outside. Apparently, he was slowly but surely losing his mind. It lasted a week until his parents found him hanging from his bedroom closet. It was a devastating tragedy for sure, but I wasn't completely convinced that it had anything to do with a chair. Billy had been a troubled kid, that was no secret. However, whether I really believed in it or not didn't matter. My gut feeling had merged with the one of the community. Whether I was afraid of the empty chair or not, as long as I lived in the strange village with all its rules and sayings, I would stick with them. 
even if it was just for the sake of my parents' mental health. And I did. All those years. Until I moved far away from the village. Living in a big city was far different than anything I'd ever imagined. I suddenly had a sense of freedom I never perceived before. At first, it was overwhelming, all the places I could go to and all the things I could do but after a while, I realized that this was exactly where I belonged. I found new friends, got a nice studio apartment, and a new sense of my own identity. But of course, the words I heard all my life stuck with me, even far away from our village. I suppose a part of me believed in the superstitions at least to some degree but I always believed that I left them with me at my old home. I didn't believe they would follow me. Not until the night. I came home rather late after drinking at the pub with a few friends. I could hardly keep my eyes open and went to bed pretty swiftly. With a last bit of consciousness, I heard the bag on the chair in my room slip to the ground. My gut kept telling me to go and pick it up but my drunken and tired mind said that everything would be fine. I should have listened to the gut. It was still pitch dark out when I woke up by the sounds. It sounded as if someone was moving inside my apartment. At first, I didn't register much. I guess for a moment I forgot that I lived alone. When the realization came to me, my eyes opened wide. My heart started racing and I had to control my breathing. I collected all my courage and quietly moved my upper body up so that I could inspect my surroundings. There was nobody there. At least as far as I could tell with the dim light shining through my window. To calm down my nerves I got up from the bed and turned on the lights. The good thing about a studio apartment is, there aren't many rooms where someone could hide. I checked behind the corner where my kitchen aisle, I checked under my bed and in the bathroom. There was no sign of someone being inside. Until I saw the coat track. Most of my jackets are black so I didn't notice right away but there was a coat that didn't belong to me as well as a black top hat. My eyes moved to the ground and when I saw the big leather issues with dirt underneath them, my entire body started shaking. Hello? I called out into the empty room. There was no response. Of course, I called the police and they checked every single corner but there was not a single sign of anyone breaking in. As they arrived, the coat and shoes were gone but I still saw the dirt stains on the ground. The police were clueless. I'm not sure whether they thought I was insane or on drugs but finally, they left and I was alone again. A part of me wondered if I possibly dreamed it all up or if I mixed up the coat with one of my own but in the end, I knew I was just lying to myself. Someone had been in here and it was my own fault for leaving the chair empty. I figured there was one simple solution to my problem, so the following evening I made sure to stack enough items on top of the chair to make sure nobody would even think about taking a seat in there. It seemed like a decent plan considering the ridiculous superstition I was following. I didn't realize however that there wasn't going back after you messed up once. That's what happened to Billy. On the first night, you question the act. You can't believe that there could be anything true to that old saying and how could it? You make yourself completely paranoid. The following night I was still confident. At least to some degree. The fear was still very much present but I believed to have a solution. I had books and clothes stacked upon my chair and after a couple of hours of tossing in my bed, I managed to fall asleep. What you don't realize is the effect the visitor has on you. It starts nibbling on your mind. If you invite it inside once, it learns your scent and it will continue coming back each night. No matter where you go or if you stay up all night. It won't stop. Until your mind can't take it anymore. I knew that. I'd heard all the stories, I just never believed how cursed we truly were. That night, I woke up by the sound of the whisper. The words made no sense to my mind but they were near and felt thoroughly unkind. A hand was grazing my face but when I opened my eyes, there was nobody to see. The next day, I thought about staying with a friend but I was afraid I might burden them with the same fate. If it followed me. So, I got a hotel room instead. I woke up when I heard a hollow laugh. It didn't stop until the sun came up again. For days I didn't sleep. Wherever I went I knew it was there with me, chewing on my mind and swallowing my free will. As the days progressed, the whispers became clearer. It was as if it was pulling me over to a side where we could communicate. A side where I could make sense out of its words. Come with me. You won't be missed. Your choice has already been made. The voice was omnipresent. It kept whispering and laughing until every moment of my life was drained in the color of nothingness. I didn't eat. I didn't sleep. I didn't feel. I was just afraid that if it pulled hard enough, I wouldn't be able to come back. Just like Billy. We were pretty superstitious. All of us were. We all lived fine and well obeying the communal gut feeling and it never disappointed as long as we listened to our sayings. 
I thought about that when every other thought in my mind stopped making sense. I thought about the things I was told ever since I was a child. The words that might even be able to help your life. Like if you want a visitor to leave your home, a bit of salt poured into their shoes will do the trick. It was a long shot but the visitor was always polite enough to leave its shoes and coat by the door. I don't know how permanent the trick is but last night I finally slept on my own again. Please like and subscribe. And tap the notification bell icon below to get notified of more Reddit DTS videos. Leave a comment down below or send us your two sentence horror stories and short horror stories at our email on the description, to be featured on our upcoming videos. Thank you for your support, this is Reddit Joe channel, your everyday Reddit.